Hey guys, this is Rasplin, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys all about Crystal PvP and what it takes to master it. Now, if you don't know what Crystal PvP is, it's basically the kind of PvP used in vanilla survival servers. Little disclaimer, this video is not going to be covering respawn anchors. Instead, you can check out the server video I made explaining how to use anchors, and it'll be in the top right right now. Also, a quick little request for today's video. Comment below if you know of a different Crystal community that isn't based around PvP Legacy or Vanilla Event Network. I'd be interested to see if there's a whole other community out there that we don't know about. Make sure to comment the server IP or Discord. Now then, let's begin the video. In order to make this more organized, I'm dividing this video into three main parts. Number one is going to be the hit crystal, showing you the main kind of combo you need to know how to do. Number two is going to be more advanced crystalline techniques that you can use after you learn the hit crystal. And then number three is just going to cover the whole rest of the kit and how to use it basically. So here's number one, the hit crystal. So, what is the hit crystal exactly? Well, the most well-known and useful technique in the community. I first learned this from my close friend Golfe, as well as Water Doge, and I'll link both their channels in the description. The basic idea is that you hit them up into the air before you crystal them so that they take more damage. And if you didn't know, yes, you take more damage if you're above a crystal, or if your feet are next to it. Now, to perform a hit crystal, you're going to need to custom keybind two of your hotbar slots for an obsidian and a crystal. I have my obsidian and crystal in slots 7 and 9, so I custom keybinded X and Q, but you can use anything you're comfortable with really. Some people use E and R, some people use 4 and 5, it's up to you. Now, you can technically still use the scroll wheel if they're next to each other, but trust me, it is so much easier to just have hotkeys rather than scrolling. So now, how do you actually do the hit crystal? This is going to sound like a lot at first, but over time, it becomes like muscle memory. The first step is hitting them up in the air with your sword. Make sure you're holding W as you do this so you knock them back and they take more upward knockback. Now, while they're in midair, you have to hotkey to obsidian and place it next to them, as well as the crystal. This is where most people struggle at first, but if you just practice hotkeys a lot, it becomes really easy. Now, the last step is just hitting the crystal with left click. If they're below around half HP when you hit crystal them, then their totem will pop. Additionally, if you place two or three crystals while they're midair, you may pop the totem and kill them before they hit the ground. That is called a double tap, and we'll be talking about that in the next section. The easiest way to practice your first hit crystals is in single player on mobs. Using the command in the description, you can spawn in a zombie with resistance. Once you can hit crystal mobs that aren't moving, try dueling real players on either PvP Legacy or Vanilla Event Network. Both IPs will be in the description. Now, we're going to talk about the more advanced crystalline techniques. So. What are some advanced crystal techniques? I'm going to be showcasing you two of the main ones, the first of which being already mentioned, the double tap, as well as the butterfly crystal. So the easier one, the double tap, is literally just the hit crystal, except you place more crystals. Depending on your ping to a server, you can place anywhere from two up to almost five crystals before they hit the ground. Now using slow fall on your target will make this easier as well. There's not much else to say about this one. Now the butterfly is just where you place two obsidians and two crystals before they hit the ground. I demonstrate that in this clip right here. To practice this, you can just try running up to them as I'm doing here and just repeating crystalline and just increase the speed at which you place your hit crystals. And like the double tap, you can increase it to even more crystals as shown here. Now, I'm gonna include a kind of bonus tip. If you wanna get some really deadly hit crystals, then you can actually place your hit crystal behind them and they'll take more upward KP, which lets you double tap them more often. It's actually pretty hard to get down consistently, but if you do, it is very, very deadly. This concludes section two, and now we'll talk about the rest of the kit, as well as how to use it. Now this is the third and final section of the video. We're gonna take a look at the average crystal kit, as well as analyzing a bit of gameplay, showing you what to do with the kit and when to use it. All right, so here's the crystal kit for the crystal duel on PvP Legacy. You got the sword, has knockback, so it's easier to knock them up for longer. Pearls, obviously for running away or catching up, whatever you need. Gapples, that's also an obvious one, just, you know, keep your health up. Zidian, crystals, crossbow for applying your slow fall. You got a totem in your hotbar. Now, tip here is have a keybind for the totem. Well, you should have a keybind for everything, but totem's a big one because if you hold it as you're in midair, you can prevent being double tapped and killed. Normally, I'd have anchors and glowstone for the last two, but this video is not specifically with anchors, so we'll just put pots in here. And then the rest of the kit, you got slow fall arrows. Obviously, that makes it easier to hit crystal them. XP to mend in netherite. You got a pickaxe in case you need it to dig out of obsidian or whatever. Pots, a few turtle pots. 
You don't need that many, it's just for dire situations. And then a few extra totems and pearls. That's the whole kit. All right, so when you get into the game, you can organize your hotbar like I'm doing if you need to. And if you're being rushed like this, that's a good time to use a pearl. Make sure you hit them with slow fall at least once every 30 seconds to get the most advantage out of the slow fire arrows and your crossbow. Right here, we're kind of just trading for hit crystals. And you don't want to do this if you're low on HP. So like right here, I pearl out because I get low and then I heal and go back in. Now in an ideal situation, you want to gap up three times because that gives you the max healing. You also want to pearl a bit of a far ways away, maybe even throw two. I had my friend Tiger Panda Gamer demonstrate what not to do here. You do not want to pearl onto a ledge or gap up on a ledge because then your feet are on the same level as crystal and you'll get your totem pop. Another good time to use a pearl is if you're about to get butterflied, you can pearl out of it to avoid getting your totem popped. So every so often, you're gonna need to gap up and mend armor. So make sure you're checking that periodically. Right here, I do a little bit, but you don't have to do it that early on. Here's a little tip. If you jump right when you're about to get hit crystal, it may just save you a totem. Now, a good place to do a butterfly crystal, if you can, is against a wall like this, because it'll knock them straighter up since they're being pushed against the wall. You can also use a double tap if you know that they're really low, and if they don't hockey to a totem or pull out, they die. Right here, you can also take off some armor that is already full enough so you can repair lower armor more. This is a little risky if you don't know where they are though, so only do it if you're sure they're not near. Avoid gapping up in your obsidian like this, or else you may be double tapped as you're eating. So you pearl out like that, and then we're good to go again. You can aggro pearl like this too, if they're low. Although it's somewhat risky, since you're going to be only gapped once or twice. If you ever pearl up a ledge, be ready to place an obsidian, because they will be waiting for it. So you can block like that, and then when you need to go back down the ledge, make sure a pearl never walk down. <laughs> However, you don't want to pearl too close to the ledge, or else you can ledge block like that. Or you may have your pearl blocked literally by the crystal entity. That can happen, yes, and it can kill you. I knew Scape was low here, so I aggro pearled and went for a butterfly, knowing there was a good chance it would kill him, and it did. As mentioned earlier, if you knock someone against a wall, then it's a good idea to go for a butterfly. But you can also use this if they knock against a obsidian. Something about that jumping thing I talked about earlier is you don't want to do it every time or else it may be predicted like that. Final thing to know is that in netherite armor, knockback is random, so it's not guaranteed you'll be able to hit crystal them. And that's about all the major tips I can think of right now but there's a lot more to it and it's mostly about practice. So get out there and start playing. Hopefully you can do better with these new tips. If you do start playing better, feel free to hit that subscribe button. No pressure though. And as always, hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.